One, two, three. Welcome to She Rock Dead. This is the place where ladies are talking about the ways we're blazing our trails and the things that put the wind in our sails. She Rocked It is a podcast and virtual community dedicated to celebrating and elevating the voices of women. I'm Karen Gross, and as a professional writer and singer for the past two decades, I've come to know the power of the voice to connect, inform, and inspire us. On this podcast, I'm pulling back the curtain on the lives of trailblazing women who reveal how they've raised their voices and rocked it across many professional fields. Ready to rock? Let's go. Hey, I'm Karen. Welcome to She Rocked It. I'm so glad you're here, and I'm especially glad you're here for this conversation with Mallory Hank Johnson, also known as MJ, who's really making a name for herself and raising her voice as an influencer, as a blogger, as a coach, an educator, and as a podcaster. She has a great podcast called A Life by You. Um, And as an influencer, she's done some incredible brand deals with big names like Coca-Cola, Costco, uh, Oreo, many more. And I had the great pleasure of meeting MJ as part of Melissa Griffin's Mastermind Program for Women Entrepreneurs. MJ just took the leap and became a full-time entrepreneur. So we're going to talk about all these things and hear about how MJ raises her voice, shares her story as a mom, as a military wife, and now as a full-time entrepreneur. She's definitely rocking it. So welcome, MJ. Thank you so much for spending your first day with us as a full-time entrepreneur. How are you feeling? I am feeling incredible. And thank you so much for just sharing space with me here on your podcast. I have been just admiring from, from, I want to say it doesn't feel like from afar because it's only been about a month or so since we haven't been in our mastermind together. Um, But it's just been awesome seeing how things have come together for you. And I'm just so, so happy to be on your platform. So thank you for sharing it with me. Thank you. I actually have literal goosebumps right now with you saying that because in this mastermind program, we've really shared our our big dreams with one another. And I feel like, again, goosebumps that you also were in that moment so excited about becoming full time after doing such an amazing job. I don't know how you were managing to run this like fast rising influencer coaching business and also managing a full time job and being a rock star mom and a wife and all the amazing things you do. But, you know, following your journey and then being in this moment with you and just fatefully on this day with you, I mean, it's magical. So thank you for what you said. And I'm also likewise so inspired by being in this moment with you. I mean, how is it that you got the courage to make that break with the kind of safety of the full-time paycheck? (laughs) It's not easy. I know myself. Oh my goodness. You know, you, you were able to witness so much of it, but I, I think that for me, it was just such a huge mindset shift in terms of what I was capable of doing and really understanding that I had already instilled in me to be able to stand on my own two feet and really just grow even further now. So, I mean, it's still very fresh and not that a nine to five is bad. You know, there are people who work their nine to five and very passionate about that. And I love that for them. I truly do. And my nine to five provided many opportunities to me. Um, but you know, when you find your passion, when you find your calling, it is just so hard to really walk away from that, no matter how safe something else may be. And I just, I I knew I was meant to be doing something else. And what started out as a hobby just really grew over time to this incredible business that, you know, I've been able to employ other people. I've been able to work and connect with people like yourself. Um, It's really surreal and understanding that I've had the power again within myself to be able to create these things and continue to do that is just, it's incredible. So... It is amazing. And I'd love you to kind of break down for us because I think I know what an influencer is. You know what an influencer is. But for people who like may not be as familiar with what that really entails and means, especially doing it full time um, in conjunction with the other amazing projects you have going on and teaching and coaching and so forth. um, Tell us what what that means to kind of be an influencer and what your day to day is really like. You know, I, first and foremost, I think we're all influencers. We, you know, and we all may have just a 
larger or smaller circle of influence by numbers, but don't get caught up in the numbers. It's quality over quantity, you know, but in, in the, I guess you could say true sense of what an influencer is. Um, most influencers uh, typically or YouTubers have a podcast, for instance, um, or um have a blog. And you can also be primarily on Instagram. So what they'll typically do is work with brands on brand collaborations, um, leveraging the audience that they have. And that's this is why I say again, um, it typically may not matter how large your audience is. There are people who are making great money and connecting with awesome brands at just a thousand followers or just Mm. with, you know, a couple hundred. And it's because they have a message, they have an impact and the ability to connect with that audience in a genuine way. And they're able to help them. um, They're able to influence them more or less. They're able to really change their mind about something or basically uh, share something that they were not aware of. And they become that go-to person or subject matter expert um, in a certain niche or a certain field. So again, going back to kind of brands that I'm kind of segueing, but working with brands, you don't have to be super big in order to be impactful um, and in order to influence people. Really, it's all about, you know, what is your message? What is your why? What is your purpose? Um, and then you can leverage that as well to work with brands that are aligned to that message and that purpose that, that may help that audience and what they're looking for, if that makes any sense. Absolutely. And I'm curious um, to kind of continue that thread. How, how did you find your voice as an influencer? Because also you've shared some very topical things of late, which have also very much moved me. So let us know about that. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, the from the time I started my platform, um, almost five years ago now, I always really basically started from a place of heart, if that makes sense. So um, and from a level of wanting to be authentic, you know, and there were moments where I definitely played into trying to look like other influencers, if that makes any sense. Yeah. But let me let me just take a step back. I think we've all tried back. to copycat the, uh, yeah, <laughs> the yeah, IG you know? models. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But where I really started finding my voice, um, you know, besides doing like, oh, look at my makeup, which again, there's no offense. You could totally be authentic sharing your makeup <laughs> tips. Totally, you can. But where I really started finding I, I, I'm my... laughing because I just did a makeup reel. My first reel was about make Like, what? I like to think I'm like, you know, kind of a philosophical, you know, <laughs> academic I, type. And I was just like, I'll show you my five minute. So thank you for not knocking the makeup. No. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's a part of who you are and there's nothing wrong with that. And it's that's the fun. fun thing. Of, that's a fun thing about these platforms is like you get to play. You get to dabble. And it's like... You know what? I'm kind of feeling this right now. Right. Is my audience into it too? Yeah, great. Let's do a little bit more about it. You just don't know until you put yourself out there. So kind of going in line with that, I was struggling with infertility before mm-hmm. I had my daughter Lucky, and it was hard as hell. Hard as hell. And I started talking about it on my platform. I was doing, you know, the cute little photo shoots with the outfits and makeup and the hair stuff, but I just was like I really felt this profound need to to talk about what was happening to me as a young woman. I mean, I, I don't want to say mid age woman, however you want to put it, millennial woman at the you sure, know, sure, yeah, in that moment, and it was unbelievable to me. I was able to connect with with like minded individuals around the world who were also going through the same thing that I was going through or had, um, and being able to connect with this community and then also continue to foster that community. It was life-changing for me. I mean, I'm talk about getting chills. I get chills. Think I, I'm getting chills right now because this community um, was so impactful to where I am now. And it's something that I, the infertility community is just unbelievable. So I started sharing my journey and I started sharing about having my miscarriages and I started cha- sharing um, how we were going through IVF treatment and mm. which a lot of people don't even understand. And there's, you know, every, just like every pregnancy is different. Every IVF journey is different. Mm. Mine was not fun or easy. <laughs> mm. And um, we had some rough patches in our marriage. And for me, social media became such an outlet not only because of this community, but because it was like the one thing I could control in my life at the time. Mm. Um, 
I had no sense of control over my body, I felt, in the in those moments going through IVF. And this was like the one thing I could control in terms of how I show up and the voice I created and the people I connected with and the, the community I was fostering. And having that power, I just went head, head first into it. And that honestly is just really where things really kick-started for me. From there, I ended up landing like a... a um, a uh, five-figure brand deal um, upon before my daughter was born. And a lot of it was because of what I was sharing is just so transparent about. Wow. I mean, some people maybe say may even say, you share too much on social media. And that's ebbed and flowed over time since I've, I've been embarking on this journey. Fast forwarding to where I am now, you know, I, I kept running into women in particular and specifically women of color who were like, how are you doing this? And how can I do this too? I really enjoyed teaching people my method and my perspectives in terms of having a sustainable yet consistent um, monetizable social media strategy. And that's what I teach my clients today. That's the one thing that I like to share is that, you know, this is achievable all on your own terms, you know, take yeah. the breaks that you need, take yep. the space that you need, use, talk about the things you want to talk about, do the makeup reel. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. have fun with this. But you can also make some money from this, which will allow you other options and other things um, to do in real life as well. So I know I probably just like went all over the place. No, but. no. I, that was such a, <laughs> a, a kind of a very moving response and uh, and just really eye-opening. Thank you so much for sharing. And I, I, there's so much I want to ask you about what you just said. At first is, how how do you get the courage to share so candidly, so, you know, um, so honestly, because I feel like when I'm on social, I am walking that line between what's my private life and what do I want to share to make those important connections with people? Because I look for those connections on social media, like many others. So what, what, what is that little seed of courage that says, I'm going to put this out there? What is that for you? For me? Um, and I have to go back in time to think about where I was, because I, I now live in a different space where it's just like, if I feel compelled to say it, I'm going to say it. Like, I feel a need to say it, so I'm saying it. Um, and, and I guess in a lot of ways, that's really really where I was back then as well. And I started testing. Like, it wasn't as deliberate. Mm. It was just kind of like, you know what? I'm just going to put a little bit out here. And it was when I first did a post about my infertility journey, I wasn't very super specific, but it was enough for someone to know, like, oh, I mean, I don't know if I could curse on here or not, but feel, they were like, oh, free. okay. Oh, she's struggling. Like, damn girl, I feel you. And so, um, but over time I, I started dipping my toe a little bit more here and don't dipping it in here and there. And I started doing these things called testimony time. Like I would be like, all right, testimony time. And I'd write this long ass caption about right. where I was at and how I was feeling and people really connected with it and would take the time to read these things. And they were over my blog. And I, I wrote a blog post one time about my um, mixed feelings about mo uh, Mother's Day. And it's one of my most read blog posts because Mother's Day is pretty rough for a lot of individuals, whether if you, you are a mother or if you've lost a mother, you may have a complicated relationship with your mother. And um, as women, granted, mothers are amazing people and I have so much respect for them like the respect level for my mother like grew tremendously after I had my my daughter mm. but you know as women we get typecast and put into these box in terms of these labels on this is what you're supposed to be and a lot of times why aren't you a mother you know and I really I talk about those type of things you know what I mean I I even now as a mother I'm just like everyone doesn't have to be a mother and being a mother isn't what's going to fulfill you and provide you happiness and there are so many other paths to happiness and anyways I'm going no, away No I appreciate off. that I appreciate that <laughs> As someone who does not have I mean, children, true. no, I appreciate that because I actually just came out of hibernation of lockdown and people were already asking me when I'm having kids. I'm like, what, what, what? I just am like, get out my I'm ovaries. I'm not fully vaccinated yet. I know. Like, <laughs> can I please just like have a minute? <laughs> yeah, right. But no, I really appreciate Seriously. that. Um, and, and, you know, you've raised your voice in a lot of very powerful ways. And one thing I've been struck with um, 
hearing from you too is this disparity between white influencers and influencers who are women of color. Um, and you've been really honest about that and raised your voice. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? It's tough. You know, I mean, already as women, we're already discounted on our value. You know, there's that. And then as women of color, just even in the working industry, which social media to me is a working industry, we're, we make significantly less, you know. Um, and I think it's important to talk about because equality, equality for one marginalized um, ethnicity or culture is really equality for all. You know what I mean? Um, but yes, it is something that comes up very often and I am very passionate about, I mean, because it obviously affects me as well. Yeah. Um, and it, it's just, it, it needs to be talked about and the more do we talk about it and have these uncomfortable conversations, the more we can become comfortable about it, the more, you know, the more we can challenge and confront the, these inequalities, I just feel it's just going to lead to a better world. I had a boss, one an, an awesome, awesome boss that I had when I became a project manager at my former job. And he said, change happens one conversation at a time. And that's just kind of where I really lean into with being in this space is that I just really, really want to have a conversation, you know, and I know com sometimes changing someone's mind doesn't happen right away. You know, it may be incremental, it may happen over time. And I also know I'm not for everyone. And that's okay. Like I lose followers every day. And that's okay. I hope they go and find the person or the space or content that they need. I, I get followers every day too. So it's, it is what it is. So um, it, again, it, it's, it's something I'm very passionate about. I actually co-founded a community um, with a group of other women of color entrepreneurs and influencers called the Orange Collab, where we really just wanted to make a safe space uh, for women to talk about these issues and really to help elevate one another and be a resource uh, for education and just being supportive. But all women, no, no offense, males, we, we do appreciate the support, but all women of all colors and ethnicities are welcome. Um, we have all types of women from all around the world in our community on Facebook. We just got to keep talking about these things. I mean, we, I in love order that. For, for the world to change, we, we just got to have these conversations one at a time. I think that is such a beautiful way to think about it too. And it makes it feel manageable rather than, mm. oh my gosh, we have to take down the system in one fell swoop. It does happen in these little bites, step by step, like you said. And I was so excited to see the launch of the Orange Collab um, when I started to see that rolling out on your social stuff and followed you all. And it's interesting because I've been thinking a lot about this idea of a network of women or a collective of women really supporting one another. And then, of course, what you all are doing is supporting a larger community as well. But tell me about your thoughts on that, because that's another reason why I also launched uh, She Rocked It and why I'm talking to such amazing women like yourself, because I feel like women can learn from and listen to and lift one another up in just unbelievable ways. And it's so inspiring to see how you all have banded together, not in any kind of spirit of competition, but a spirit of collaboration. Like we're all yes. in this together, right? And we are more powerful together and we have so much knowledge we can all share. And you all are kind of doing your unique posts and sharing your unique perspectives and you all have your you know, unique experiences you bring to the game. So tell me about your thoughts on this, this network of women, which I'm just, I'm feeling, especially virtually, is just so important right now. Oh. It is so, so necessary. And I think we, we certainly have a, a good bias in a lot of ways from being in the mastermind that we were in together, but um, coming together and really just, you know, locking locking arms with one another in terms of just sharing information and sharing experiences. Sorry, I'm getting chills just thinking about I'm it. I'm goose bumping this I, whole interview. Carol. I know. I'm, I'm like, like, seriously, woo. <laughs> Like I'm I feeling on my legs right now. <laughs> I know. Energy, I'm starting but... to sweat. Um, I know. That's good. <laughs> but, I always yeah, feel like we're right? looking. This is the moments we want to have. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The vibration. It is. It's right <laughs> there. But, you know, creating these safe spaces where women are like, I can ask the dumb questions. Yeah. There are no dumb questions. But like, hey, um, I don't know how to do this. Or, hey, what do you think about this? And really just making it a grassroots effort where it, it really is created with a community. I mean, it's just everyone needs, I feel like everyone needs a safe space. And mm. also understand every space isn't going to be someone's safe space. And I think over time, I've just realized, again, you can create that space for 
for anyone, you know, for like-minded people. And it's okay if you turn off other people. Um, but there's more than enough room for everyone. That's the other thing, you know? And that's why, like, collaboration like this is just, like, is so important. I love that. And I'm curious if there's any women in particular, obviously the amazing women in the Orange Collab, but other women just along your journey who maybe have inspired you to raise your voice so Mm. courageously. Anyone else you want to recognize or shout out? Absolutely. My mama, most importantly. And I know, again, um, you know, mamas get a lot of credit and my mom deserves so much credit. She's actually watching my daughter for me right now. She's a huge supportive person and just honestly has always just been like, such a cheerleader in terms of anything I want to do and just believes in anything that I've ever dreamed of doing. So I appreciate that. Um, And then honestly, I know this might be like a fangirl moment, but Melissa Griffin changed my life. Like I adore her. Yeah. She changed my life and I was able to, I'm in the next round of the mastermind right now of hers. And I saw her two weeks ago and I just looked her in eyes. I was like, girl, I love you. Like I genuinely love you. And the space, I, I, I adore the space that she's created for us to create these connections, you know, these communities. Yes. And I long to do that for, for other women as well. So, um, I think it's, I, I would raise my hand and say, she's absolutely one of the women who have inspired me to raise my voice. Here we are. And I'm speaking to you on the podcast that never would have happened had it not been for her and her giving me the confidence I needed to be in this moment with you right now. So here, here. (laughs) I love that. I love it. Totally. And, um, you know, just to go back to the um, the mom topic, um, you so graciously acknowledged your mom, and we're um, dependent on when when you're listening to this episode. Um, we're just a few days shy of Mother's Day, <laughs> so it's an apropos time to speak to MJ because she does focus on motherhood and her journey as a mom um, in the way she raises her voice. And you know, last year with the lockdown, it was a really rough time for moms in a lot of ways. And I've been reflecting on that. I'm not personally a mom, but I obviously know a lot of moms. I have a mom and I've been thinking about um, the women who've had to leave the workforce and Mm -hmm. the women whose lives were, you know, already challenged, but even more so when the pandemic hit. So I just want to get maybe your thoughts on that, because I feel like as an influencer, you said something earlier about how it lets you maybe live a more flexible life. And yes, you're monetizing this because it's a business. I'm, I'm fortunate that the company that I worked for was super flexible in terms of being a mother. You know, they, they were very accommodating, but there were still challenges where it's just like, um, yeah, I can't do that. I, I got my kid at home. You know what I mean? But, you know, I do wish more organizations and just the world culture in generally general was more accommodate accommodating and then also provided more grace to mothers because this shit is hard. <laughs> Long and short of it. Yeah. You know, take away the job, take away having a business. This shit is hard. I mean, having a innocent child crying upset because I mean you're not in your best place and you're trying your best to navigate their temper tantrum or whatever you want to be I mean that really checks your patience (laughs) in so many different ways and then you layer on top of that trying to work I mean it I, I have had other influencers that I've coached and their mothers and a lot of the reasons why they reach out to me is because they're like, how do you, how are you doing this? Like, how are yeah. you doing with this with the job and with the child? Mm-hmm. And they really need some help creating those boundaries and creating those processes so they can build this business and create that income and grow and flourish. Um, but it's something that needs to continue to be talked about, you know, in, in so many respects, as we mentioned um, with other things. I mean, um, I know for even my husband, it was somewhat of a a, a shift on okay, yeah, you could really, I mean, not that I was looking for his permission in a lot of ways, but it was just like, I I feel comfortable with you making this decision. Like, this is real. Like, Mm -hmm. even though this isn't the tried and true or comfortable way of making income or even creating a business on top of that, um, he believes in it. And I'm thankful that I have a supportive husband that, that sees that. But there are other people who are like, wait, what are you doing? Huh? So how does that like work? You know what I mean? How do you make money? And um, 
yeah, it, it's, it's something that's real, that's tangible, and it deserves the respect because even working with a brand, when I get off of this today, I have content that I've got to create for a brand. I've got to edit some stuff for a brand. I mean, it's work. It, it takes time, and it's time away from my family. It's, it's time, time and space away from me because I'm helping with someone else's brand and elevating them, which I'm happy that I'm doing. It's, I'm excited about the products I'm talking about, but it's work. Like, it's, it's trading of time. So it deserves its, its respect, in my opinion. I couldn't agree more. And, um, you know, I just wish you such a beautiful new chapter ahead because it's work, but it just seems like work that is so natural to you in a way. When I see you shining in your social media, I just see a woman in her genius and in her brilliance. And so I'm just so happy for you. And I'm wondering if you can um, share maybe two quick tips with us for the uh, folks who are tuning in. Um, the first is what is your maybe one tip for balancing work and motherhood? Um, and, and maybe that's too simple a question. Maybe I should rephrase it as what's a tip for navigating the balance (laughs) between work and motherhood? Because I've heard also maybe there is no balance. Maybe you're more just navigating kind of the, the juggling act. So what what Mm -hmm. one tip would you share with us? Give yourself grace. And it's something that I'm still learning to practice. I get... Um, I give myself a a guilt mom trip multiple times a week, if not once a day. And um, I mean, it was Sunday yesterday, and I was doing work for a client and lucky is like, Mama, I want to play mama. And she was having a moment where she only wanted me. She didn't want my husband. And it, it, it's rough. But I at the same time, I know by creating this empire um, that that I'm working on right now, it's taken some time, but it, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Um, Amen. It's really going to open up so many doors for her, and I really just want her to know she can have a choice when she decides to enter the workforce. She can either create something on her own, anything that she wants, and she's going to work hard for it. She's going to have to. Or she can go to work and work for someone, which there's totally nothing wrong with. But I I want her to understand she has that choice. Um, But that choice does require sacrifice. And sometimes that sacrifice is time. And and honestly, at the end of the day, she's fine. You know, she had her dad to go hang out with and he swooped her up and I knocked out what I needed to do. But she's not going to remember that she's two. Um, But... Just giving yourself that grace that you you really are doing this as a means to an end, um, and and while it has so much to do with yourself, if it's a if, if it's your passion or what you love doing, um, you really are contributing to your your child's future. You know what I mean? For me, I'm doing this to create generational wealth. I feel this is the the path in order for me to do that, and I felt that I wasn't going to be able to do that with the nine to five that I had. And again no offense, there's other people who have other options with that. But I feel this is what's going to change things tremendously for my family, and it already has. Um, And so just those moments, again, when she's tugging on me, I have to remember the means to the end and the greater purpose. And it, it, I'm just so fortunate that we have these, I, I have created this as an option, not only for her, but for myself, but also for her. Wow, that is so beautiful and so inspiring as your kind of anchor why <laughs> when things get a little bit challenging and chaotic, you remember this is for her future and also that you're modeling what a woman can do. Mm-hmm. It's so inspiring that you do have those choices and that's a beautiful thing. And um, for those women listening also, I would love you to share with us. We're all looking to rock it in our careers and in our, following our callings like you are doing so courageously and so beautifully. Um, so if you could leave us with one tip so we can rock it like you are, <laughs> what's your one tip to rock it? Live, live in yourself fully. You know what I mean? Don't live into what others think you're supposed to be or within those parameters or within this box, like break the damn box and live fully in terms of who you want to be. And it's so freeing to do that and write your own story, write your own dialogue, like break down barriers, tear down walls, 
do do it all and it, yeah just write your own story live live fully of who you want to be in your own truth Oh my gosh, I love that. I'm just imagining, I know you love Beyonce. I'm just imagining her with that baseball bat, like breaking down that damn box that you're talking about. Yes, like, yes, right? yes, yes that that's exactly, that, right? yes, yes, you're exactly like, right. Yes. And you have done that and you continue to do that. And I cannot wait to see you continue to break down the boxes and just mm. share your sparkle with the world. You are such a bright light and I'm so excited to get to continue to follow your journey on social media and as your friend. So thank you so much, MJ, for taking this time on your first day as, but it's, it doesn't feel sort of like your first day. I feel like you, you've been rocking this for years, but <laughs> your first day f- officially as a full-time entrepreneur, so exciting. What an honor to be here with you. I'm celebrating with you so hardcore and just adore and admire you more than I can say. And this has been such an inspiring conversation about how you raise your voice and break down the boxes. Oh, thank you so much again, Karen, for just, again, having me on your platform and just allowing me to to share a part of my journey and being a part of this journey. You know what I mean? Especially today. Um, It's amazing. And I can't wait to see what more you're going to do with your platform and see more women rock it. You know what I mean? It's I can't wait. So thank you. Thank you so much. That means everything. And here we go. (laughs) Thanks so much for tuning into the She Rocked It podcast. I'm your host, Karen Gross. This episode has been produced by Tori Marcioni and Jake Siegelbaum with audio engineering by Teng Chen. The She Rocked It theme song is by Karen Gross and Tim Motzer. I invite you to join us on Instagram at She Rocked It and join our Rockstar network at SheRockedIt.com. We hope you'll add your voice to the conversation because at She Rocked It, we are dedicated to raising the volume on women's voices. She rocked-